Hi, everyone, and thank you for continuing to stay with us during these segments of Moments with Mumila. I have our next wonderful guest. Her name is Martha Kayak, or sorry, how do I say that correctly? I actually had met, I believe, your son recently, and at first, uh, the way he was saying your name, I didn't catch on, and then he explained a little bit more, and I was like, oh, of course I know Martha, but <laughs> I know that not everybody calls you Martha. So if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, that would be great to get us started. Mm. Thank you. Mata Kayanga Yunga, Mitty Madrin, New Texas, your Lunga, Adawa, Minuna Castilla Rotunga. I'm Mata Kaya, that's how I say my name. And if you see it written, it was, you would say Martha Kiak, <laughs> but we pronounce it Mata Kaya. And I'm originally from Pond Inlet and have been living in Ottawa for the last 10 years. So I'm an educator, I teach at Nunavut Sivunik Sabut. And I've been teaching, I've been in education almost all my life. And, uh, and aside from that, I'm, I did a lot of sewing and did a lot of art. So I'm a fashion designer on the side. When I moved to Ottawa, I didn't plan to be a fashion designer, but um, seems like my path has directed me to fashion design. That's great. And, yeah. And I have three children and three grandchildren. Um, my mother uh, is living in Ottawa at Senior's home, and she had 11 children, and I'm the 11th child, so I'm the youngest of her children. Yeah, they, you're the youngest. I love um, those memes on Facebook that are like the young or the oldest is the most responsible or whatever and um it's very 180 with i'm the oldest and my brother is much more he's the younger one but much more what you think the the youngest is is <laughs> is not he's the complete opposite so uh and and that's a really big family 11 kids and and there's a lot of deaths in our family so there's only um Four of us left, four oh. siblings, yeah. Four of 11. And I think that that's something too even has been such a shift going from very, very big families to smaller families I find in the territory even in the last mm -hmm. couple of decades that that is the norm, I guess, has almost changed in, in that even. Super interesting. Uh, you said you, you're from Pond Inlet. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, when you started sewing and, and who taught you and how, how that became more and more, um, how you got better and better at it? Okay. So um, living in a tiny community, there wasn't a lot of resources. There was a lot of stores you can go to and buy clothing or parkas, coats. So a lot of Inuit do a lot of sewing because that's, that's how they survive. And it's also part of our rich culture. And um, it's been passed on from generation to generation, the sewing techniques and the patterns that they carried from our, from our history. So we still that still use that those patterns and made it more modern. And if you look at the history, you can see the change of the fashion from Inuit um, fashion. When um, beads were introduced, they made beautiful beaded amautis, and and when canvas and uh, duffel was introduced, they started making parkas with furs and with bias tape. So Inuit has, have always been um, innovative and creative and using ev any resource that they had and made it beautiful. So that's part of our culture and growing up in the small community, it, uh, we were doing a lot of sewing. My mother did a lot of sewing, my sisters. So it was 
I was immersed into sewing and we saw a lot of that and uh, I'm sure it still happens today. And my sister Lily helped me a lot in sewing and she passed away when I was young, but she taught me a lot and also my sister April. And my mother was very critical uh, with my sewing and how I did things. So she was like uh, the judge <laughs> and critiqued me a lot. And <clears throat> she was a perfectionist when she was so in her sewing. So she expected that from us as well. And I, yeah, and I've been sewing ever since. Yeah, just immersed in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's it's techniques too that are hundreds or thousands of years old and uh, back before contact with the government it could be a matter of life and death we're talking about frostbite and those extreme conditions but uh, we're talking as well about um, what's the right term um, being able to sew I think is one thing but it but it's also about craftsmanship and um, I'm blanking on the word, not inventing, but being creative and it'll come to me at, at some point in inventing things, creating things and making things well is something I think that it's, it's so, it's amazing to learn more about working with different materials and those kinds of things. Can you tell us more about the kinds of materials that you do work with and, and how would you, I guess, how would you describe your style of design? Um, it, it has changed. When I was living in Pond, I did a lot of sewing for my children, my nieces nephews and their children so i've always been sewing for free in pond and like, like i didn't charge them their family so it was just parkas but i did a lot of designs looking at uh, magazines and catalogs this would look really good as a parka so i started playing around with uh, some designs and yeah, I've always done that and up to now I I really like pretty things. <laughs> such being such a girly part of me likes flowers and fur, pretty things. So I started making floor jack parkas with fur and with belt making the women with the curve look really nice. So I started doing that. Those have been popular. <clears throat> and also I like, uh, if you can see this jacket, so I like patterns, straight patterns and playing around with it, making it very modern and yet stylish and that pe anybody can wear, not just Inuit, but anyone can wear it. That's amazing. I love it. I love the, uh, and I'm so bad, oh my goodness all of my personal social media accounts are like filled with designer like Inuit and indigenous designers and beaters and jewelers and oh I can't I love pretty things too and <laughs> it's so hard like oh, I just want it all yeah. um, you said that your your I don't think style is the right word but the way that uh, and what you have sewn has changed a little bit over the years um, in that and with fashion um, being kind of a, an, another part, I guess, of, of your work because you said you're an educator and, and you do have a full-time job and you also do this. Uh, can you talk about some of the experiences that you've had through fashion? Maybe some people that you didn't expect to meet you got to meet or maybe places you got to go. Um, can you tell us about some of your, I guess, maybe highlight um, fashion related experiences? Yeah, uh, how this started when I was, when I just moved here, I was going through divorce and I was going through financial difficulties and I wanted to sell my 
parkas or like make them at, uh, attractive enough to sell. So I started selling those on Iqaluit Sell Swap <laughs> on Facebook. And somehow someone noticed my designs and um, I got contacted. And if, if I wanted to be the, in the Indigenous Fashion Show in Ottawa. And that's how it started here in Ottawa. So it was my first time in a fashion show I, I can't remember what year it was maybe it was six years ago but uh, that's how it started and it was the feeling that I got I was so proud I was like scared is um, I was very critical with myself and I want to make sure it's really well done as an Inuk I wanted to represent Inuit well and Inuit uh, in their sewing they also sew in excellence and that's well made that's how we are as Inuit and I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to get criticized by other Inuit uh, seamstresses <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that everything was really well done and that's how it started and a year after that I got invited to another fashion show <clears throat> and then we went to Toronto Indigenous Fashion Week and then last year I went to Calgary Indigenous Fashion Show and I got an email right after that from Vancouver and it's global fashion show and it's <clears throat> not just indigenous it's global everywhere in the world are going to go there and there was going to be media uh, from magazines and other media and buyers as well so i was really looking forward to that and i was getting ready for that and then pen this uh covid 19 started and everything was shut so this fashion show has been moved to next year and i'm really looking forward to that yes this whole covid situation my goodness what yeah. a, mm, what a what a weird time we are living in mm, so, um i keep doing this i have a train of thought and then the train leaves the station before i can do anything about it um <laughs> <laughs> oh here we go sorry speaking um uh, speaking of other seamstresses and and other inuit and 100 percent, there's definitely that when when you're a more well-known seamstress and even just being a seamstress in general everything needs is so so it is done in a way where it is like it's not even just like quality it's like precise precision oh oh i love it that gives me goosebumps <laughs> um and growing up in in pond and moving down to ottawa what are some of the barriers that you think would have happened if you were to try and do this while you were living in the territory in nunavut yeah when i lived in nunavut i had a small business it was called kisutalvik so i had um so i have the experience of owning a business and running a business business in a small community and I know the challenges it has especially with shipping and um, before that there was no so hardly any social media back then and getting my business out there and it was all by word of mouth back then and <clears throat> before i was moving here it, i had to close it so i was selling fabric fabrics and gift items and books whatever that you can't find at the northern or at the co-op i tried to provide that and <clears throat> and trying to compete with other businesses was very difficult because it's such a small business and once you have a business people think oh she's so rich she must be getting so much money but it's not the it's not the fact it takes small steps to reach that goal that dream that you have 
and you may have big dreams huge dreams but there's obstacles that you're going to face and there might be doubt in yourself how you're going to reach that goal how you're going to reach that that big dream that you have but you have to have small dreams to make small steps to reach that goal so that would i that's what i would give an advice to other inuit it's okay to dream small as well. When you start small, you start going, reaching out. It's not a huge thing. It's not scary anymore. So when you start with small dreams, you just start taking those steps and reaching those. They're more easy, easier to uh, get a hold of the dreams. Absolutely. And it's always super healthy and positive for for us to continuously make goals and mm -hmm. here's my goal i reach it okay what's the next goal yeah. what am i what am i gonna do next what am i gonna learn or what am i gonna try to achieve next i think that's something goal setting is something so important and i think that we give people this idea that all of a sudden one day everything's gonna make sense and bam your whole life is gonna somehow <laughs> go together <laughs> but realistically we need to make those small achievements mm. to get to the big achievement and yeah. then it's it's also very very learning how to feel good about yourself feel positive yeah. about achieving something so yeah, it's more rewarding mm -hmm. yeah and um i to to totally agree with you <laughs> so, so on on that note um, what do you hope for the future of fashion for Inuit? Uh, I'm, I'm very confident that I'll be seeing more fashion designers because um, that's in our bloodline. That's who we are as Inuit. We're very creative. We, we take what's out there and just take the best out of it and make it look really pretty, like without a lot of resources and i'm going to see more fashion designers i'm just one of them and um and i'm going to keep doing what i'm doing and hopefully i'll find other people that want to work with me and we can work together as we work together and um help each other more we can achieve more absolutely once we work together and support one another yeah, all that, the things we can accomplish yeah that's the huge thing is supporting one another as inuit um we need to do that more absolutely uh just before we wrap up i'm gonna 100 percent put you on the spot um are there any garments behind you that you can tell us a little bit about yeah of course um uh, una <laughs> the jacket that's a men's jacket it's a bomb bomber jacket and i had custom made them so i have a few left and uh it's not real seal skin but it looks seal skin but it's not and they are for sale and also this one behind me the jacket is for sale and i sold uh, a couple of uh, parkas and I have more dresses that are for sale and there um, I had a model that came a couple of days ago and she's gonna have a photo shoot and she asked if I if she can use my designs and I said yeah so she has maybe four or five of my designs that she's gonna do a photo shoot with so yeah Awesome. I love it. And where can people go and look at your, your designs? Currently, it's just on Facebook. And I have a um, page called Martha Kayak um, Inukshik. Inukshik? Inukshik. Martha Kayak Art and Designs. I think that's what it's called. I can't remember. And I have a website as well. And it's in the, uh, the Facebook page. And I also have Instagram and it's under my name. 
Awesome. So people can find you on social media, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just before we say bye, what do you hope for yourself and, and your future? What do you hope to accomplish? Um, as I said before, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And, uh, and I want to uh, find people that want to work with me so we can have better goals and reaching more globally not just Nunavut and having Inuit designs made by Inuit uh, designed by Inuit um, reaching globally and yeah I would like to work with people and um, have a have a good purpose and not just be dreamers but also start doing what you want to do in your life we can dream big, but once we start doing things, we we can accomplish more. Mm -hmm. Not to just dream, but to to achieve, to accomplish. Oh, yeah. I love it. Can't see it, but I have goosebumps. I love these conversations. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your day today, Mata, and look forward to the fashion show next year that's unfortunately been postponed, and uh, your future. I'm so, so excited for you. Thank you so much. I'm really proud of you. And I, I just want to speak blessing over you and good future. And um, I will support you in every way. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Mm. Okay. Bye. Bye.